recent report by Parliament's Portfolio Committee on Police has found that many stations are in a state of disrepair, negatively impacting on the morale of officers, poor maintenance and a lack of infrastructure are just some of the issues raised. Let's speak now with uh, EFF Portfolio Committee member Virgil uh, Garrick, as well as a Pop Chris spokesperson uh, Richard Mamabulu. Gentlemen, good to have you and thank you uh, for coming on. Let's talk about this recent report before the Portfolio Committee, uh, Virgil. Uh, what, what is it showing? What are the uh, uh, pitfalls, what are the shortfalls, what are the shortcomings in terms of these buildings? Hi there, good evening and good evening to the viewers. Uh, yes, it was a shocking report, uh, Richard, uh, in the sense of that the, uh, some of the stations are dilapidated, some of the stations are unfinished, and some of the police stations are in uh, construction for many years, some of them since 2012, uh, and it has not even been handed over in some cases. So it is a shocking state of affairs. In the meantime, the communities are suffering, uh, and services cannot be rendered uh, by the police because in many cases they do not have accommodation, they don't have offices, they have to operate uh, from uh, temporary offices and so on. Uh, and even the police headquarters at Telkom Towers, for that matter, is in a, a shocking state, in a dilapidated state, and hundreds of millions of rands were paid for that building. And the committee has refused to accept that report. We have criticized it severely. We want better services. The understanding is, the argument is that the police, the constitutional responsibility of the police is in terms of Section 205 of the Constitution, is to prevent, to combat, and to investigate crime. It means that the police cannot be burdened with building and constructing buildings, uh, and therefore the Department of Public Works, it's their responsibility to construct and build police stations, and they must make sure uh, that we and the police, the communities and the police have proper buildings, quality buildings and state-of-the-art buildings and also that it has passed the constitution, the, 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 the master in terms of uh, building regulations and so on. And therefore, uh, we expect a report. We have, today we've respected, we, we have received a report back uh, from the Department of Public Works uh, signaling some of the progress made in terms of requirements of the portfolio committee and the pressure that we have applied uh, and, and saying that we are not satisfied with the services delivered, particularly by public works, yeah. uh, that are supposed to deliver these buildings to the police here. So they are aware of the state of these buildings. Um, they are acknowledging that there is a challenge with these buildings. They are saying they are making steady progress. Um, um, in, in what areas are they making progress? Uh, do they indicate? Look, uh, Tabu, I'm, I, I'm not entitled to speak on behalf of the committee. I am entitled to speak on behalf of the EFF and yes. what we have uh, observed. Uh, we are of the opinion as the EFF, they, they, not, they are not making enough progress, uh, and therefore the hold-up in services, particularly in rural areas uh, and in areas outside your metros and your cities, where people really need the police service and so on. Uh, if you take, for instance, in Limpopo, some of the police stations are coming on since 2012. It has not been finished. It has not been handed over officially by a minister or deputy minister uh, or even the DG of the department for that matter. Some of the instances, uh, police must uh, travel huge distances to take people from a crime scene to a police station. Uh, and even to the courts, and sometimes their vehicles break uh, and they cannot properly transport uh, these people that they have apprehended. Those are some of the challenges that people are facing. And we are applying pressure from our side of the committee to say that the processes must be expedited uh, in order to uh, deliver service. There's, there's, there's such a lot of bureaucracies and red tape when it comes to the construction of government buildings. Uh, it's a department of uh, public works, is the main culprit here. Uh, and you will notice that ministers have, been, have, have changed since uh, Minister De Lille has left office. There's a new DG in place. The new DG has signaled that he's serious in delivering the services and therefore the report that we've received today. But it's not enough to receive the report. Yeah. We, we, we demand that we really see <coughs> on the ground yeah. what has changed uh, and what uh, people can expect from the services in that community. Uh, because policing 
is a key function in terms of our constitution. Right. And you cannot have police personnel that are not properly housed in offices uh, and do not have the logistic support uh, and the resources in order to combat and fight crime. We must equip our police personnel. We must equip our courts in order to fight crime uh, and to keep our community safe. So if they say that there's steady progress, they might come up with a report to say that A, B, C, D, we have made progress in this regard, uh, and therefore, uh, uh, you know, the communities can feel safe, but we don't see the progress. We don't see the progress. We will give credit where credit is due, but we must criticize if there's no progress in whatever regard. Yeah. And so therefore, uh, we trust that the new DG in the Department of Public Works uh, must come up with a program that will expedite service delivery, that will make sure that services are in place, that buildings are properly equipped, uh, that taps are running, that toilets are working, that uh, uh, you know parking facilities are in order, uh, and all those type of things that are not in order at the moment with some of those police stations. Uh, there's a police station in Deiselsdorf, for instance, in the Klinkerhoer, uh, in Deiselsdorf. That police station is dilapidated. It's, it has been newly built. It has been handed over. But there are such a lot of open cracks, uh, so much so that the police uh, have to resort to some alternative accommodation, uh, but the building is new. And the, the problem here is that nobody is being held accountable. Nobody has been brought to book. Nobody, no criminal charges whatsoever have been laid against anybody because some of the buildings are not even complete, but people have claimed money. Uh, and so we suspect, and this is what the EFS said, we suspect that there's collusion and corruption between some contractors and some of the personnel in some departments, and we have called on the police to properly and thoroughly investigate those type of practices. Um, let's bring Richard in. Richard, let's talk about these deficiencies and how they um, are affecting the work of police before we speak about how they should be addressed. For example, the fact that there are no new police stations that uh, are being built, the upgrades are taking long to happen, maintenance of the police infrastructure is also at a low, all-time low. How is this affecting policing services? Good evening to you and the viewers. Look, we've got 1,154 police stations across the country in different provinces. And I think uh, what uh, we, we, we obviously encourage is that the Portfolio Committee on Policing needs to do further work in investigating why these deficiencies would have occurred. Because I think uh, in most cases, uh, this uh, uh, infrastructural in integrity uh, well, uh, deficiencies have got an impact uh, mainly on uh, police stations, which are mainly in townships and rural areas. And of course, this has painted a big picture because uh, you know that our members cannot function in the manner which they're supposed to. Just the report which was released recently demonstrated that uh, uh, there have been break-ins within police stations, and part of the reasons are due to the fact that uh, the infrastructural integrity is not in sync with what is uh, well expected. And uh, I was, uh, for the past two decades, we've lost about 10% uh, of the firearms within the SAPS uh, police stations, uh, with uh, over 9.5 uh, million uh, ammunition stolen within this uh, facility. So we think that there definitely needs to be more work that is done. We think that uh, obviously the responsibility is currently with the public works department. We would want to ensure that uh, they not only look into SAPS buildings, but all government buildings to ensure that uh, they are compliant with the uh, safety standards. And of course, uh, well, in some areas, for example, what uh, the colleague has spoken about, for example, you speak about uh, the telecom towers, which was closed recently, and the uh, Pointons building, which houses the headquarters of the Department of Correctional Services. Uh, it has been uh, proven that uh, uh, they didn't have a, co a certificate of occupancy. That then means that there would have been something which would have uh, not necessarily went according to the lease agreement. So in the cases where the, when the public works does not own the buildings, we would obviously expect that they should ensure that uh, whoever they list these buildings from should obviously be uh, compliant as well. But as well, it should also be the role of employers to ensure that uh, wherever members of the public service are housed, uh, those uh, uh, facilities are quite uh, uh, suitable for those conditions. With regards to, again, uh, well, the delays in naturally building police stations, 
you've got a police station in Vuwali in Nimpopo, which has uh, well been well, which has since been constructed from 2012 up to now, has not yet been ready. And of course, uh, that would be the responsibility of the Department of Public Works. So we think that uh, the, the well police, the portfolio committee needs to look further into this matter. We continue now. Let's speak uh, once again, uh, Virgil uh, Garrick, as well as uh, spokesperson for Popco Richard Mamabulo. Uh, Virgil with the EFF in that portfolio committee earlier on. Uh, Virgil uh, noted as saying that um, it needs to be business unusual, so to speak, uh, in terms of um, the strategies that need to be taken. Uh, how do you see the police taking over the function of, of um, the, the infrastructure and not being so heavily reliant on the Department of Public Works? Yes, Tabu, it, I agree with you. It cannot be business as usual. Uh, if our police stations are in a state of dilapidation, uh, and if work cannot be delivered on time, you know, you know, just to emphasize, you cannot build a police station since 2012 up until 2023, uh, and nobody is held accountable. So the argument then should be uh, that if the Department of Public Works cannot live up to their mandate, uh, then there should be some kind of replacement or substitution of that function with government. Uh, as I've said in my introduction, that Section 205 obliges the police to combat and investigate and prevent crime. That is their sole, sole mandate, exclusive mandate. Uh, we, we are not sure uh, if you can place that responsibility within the police department uh, unless you bring in a civilian department within the police department uh, to manage the construction of buildings, the engineering site, and so on and so on. Uh, with the, and those uh, staff and personnel must uh, possess the relevant qualifications and expertise. Uh, uh, then it's a point of debate. Uh, but uh, public works must uh, zip up and public works must come to the table in order to deliver what the mandate is. And the mandate is to deliver and construct uh, government buildings and look after, maintain the buildings as well. Uh, so yes, uh, if it must be insourced, it must be insourced to uh, civilians, qualified civilians within the department. But you see the problem here, Tabu, is the following. That there's a lack of oversight when it comes to the Department of Public Works. And nobody actually wants to take responsibility for the poor quality of work and the poor execution of work. Uh, and also nobody wants to take respons uh, political responsibility uh, for the poor delivery uh, of that service. Uh, if you take from Minister DeLol and way back before her, you know, there's a lot of discrepancies uh, in the uh, department with regard to political oversight uh, and the ability to deliver politically. And therefore, if you have the right people politically and administratively in place, uh, that department may deliver because the, that department is de equipped to deliver. But it's about the political world to deliver. Uh, it's about the reporting system. It's about the oversight, and it's about holding people accountable. And the EFF says that we are very staunch and strict uh, on the issue of accountability. You cannot have people in positions that do not want to take responsibility. Yeah. And, and, and likewise, you cannot pay people huge salaries uh, to execute certain jobs, and they do not do their jobs, and they do not play their role and their responsibilities. And therefore, people must be substituted. People must be replaced. People must be fired, and they, and, 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 and they, they must their jobs must be terminated if they yeah. cannot deliver uh, those type of uh, responsibilities. So let, let, up to let, let, let's talk about that oversight for a little bit. I mean, Public Works is, is for example, still paying for the telecom towers, uh, and uh, apparently the minister has admitted that he has not been in that building himself. He's been working from home because. Uh, it's supposed to be the headquarters, but it can't even be inhabited by, by, by humans. How, how does that slide? How does that go past? I mean, even the portfolio committee, that you do not pick that up? No. The, the portfolio, the, the moment when that report came to the portfolio committee, look, that the report has been uh, in the portfolio committee for quite some time. We've discussed certain matters of the telecom towers, uh, although we did not go public on many of these things because we tried to work it out uh, with the Department of Public Works. But there's gross, gross uh, uh, inadequacies in that uh, telecom building. 
you know, there's a lack of, of, of ventilation, for instance, since if you say this is the headquarters of the police, there's a lack of uh, pollution facilities, ventilation, and all those type of things. I mean, it's basic things uh, that should have been taken care of, and it has not been taken care of. You take the issue of the minister that says that he does not have a, uh, a, an, an office within the head office. Uh, the minister says to the committee that he's working from home, and many times his life and his family's life is in danger because he sees people at home. This is a disgrace, a, a real disgrace on people that are in positions of power and that cannot deliver. I mean, uh, this is basic things that should have been done, and these things are not being done. And you, uh, on, the, on, the, on the head office level, you are dealing with profession, professionals. You cannot accommodate professionals in a building that do not even have pollution facilities. And therefore, we have lashed out. We have taken a strong stance against this report of the Telcom <coughs> Towers, for instance. And we want things to be repaired. You go over to the, to the police uh, laboratory, laboratories nationwide. Some of these laboratories are not in working condition. You take the one in Amazon Totu, Amazon Toti. The one in, 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 in Amazon Toti has been built uh, in a low level area each time when it rains and it floods. The floors are wet and people have to vacate the vicinity. Well, the result is that lab tests cannot be done and therefore the backlog. Yeah. And so this is too, totally, totally yeah. unacceptable. Uh, and since this police uh, service is a critical service to fighting crime in our, in our country. Yeah. And therefore we call that the right people, be the right positions to fight crime, to construct buildings and to execute their duties as they are being paid. Right. For according to their roles and responsibilities. Richard, just begin. Uh, I mean, what, what is your view on 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 the fact that a large of the things that are affecting the the policing are outside of the control of the police, or so external factors that really have got to do, I suppose, with the functioning of the Department of Public Works. Uh, in some instances, uh, I believe the National Intervention Unit offices, for example, have been flagged as one of the areas where there is no water. Uh, and in some instances, no clean drinking water, the power <coughs> tables have been stolen and so on and so forth. With a suggestion uh, uh, by some of the members of parliament that uh, the, the, the function certainly should, should uh, be, be taken away, in, in a sense, from public works, uh, so that you don't have to account to public works in terms of this infrastructure. Well, Tavo, look, as things stand, we are over, uh, police are overburdened by, well, uh, actually implementing their constitutional mandate, which is to keep South Africans safe and secure. So having, uh, well, the SAPS being directly responsible for buildings uh, would not necessarily be sufficient. And of course, remember that uh, public services not only deals with, uh, well, buildings for police officers, but all, well, for all public servants in the main, government buildings rather. So, so I think, uh, we should obviously strengthen the uh, well, uh, oversight and accountability, especially when it has to do with uh, a, well, the Department of Public Works. Because I think uh, in our experiences, for example, we've had issues around uh, well, the, the, the telecom towers since 2019. But even before that, there were challenges with the uh, point on the building, like I had pointed out before, which was uh, the head office of the well, Department of Correctional Services. Now, in certain instances, you would then expect that uh, after having uh, well, uh, provided reports about the state of uh, these buildings, you would also have uh, well, the Department of Labor also coming in to ensure that uh, they do inspections. And in our case, of course, we've done inspections with them, uh, yet uh, the problem would be as to the turnaround time within which uh, certain decisions are taken. The point uh, where the telecom towers matter was uh, it's an issue from, from back in 2019. It's only resolved recently, but uh, so so that of course has placed the the, Lord, well, the lives of uh, uh, many of our members at risk. And I think uh, perhaps that's one of the things that we should also consider that uh, we have got uh, well. Uh, and the Department of uh, Labor being more proactive when it, when it comes to ensuring, ensuring that uh, the buildings which uh, government occupies are quite safe. And what other agencies, I mean, do you have as options that can certainly, I don't know if the police have thought about that because, of course, they are directly affected by this. That could do a significantly better job in terms of maintaining your infrastructure. Look, 
despite uh, well uh, what normally happens is that even if uh, well the department well government does not own a building and the building is leased uh, through the department of public works there's supposed to be a contractual obligation to ensure that uh, these uh, buildings uh, meet uh, well specific criteria and i think uh, i would agree with the colleague there that perhaps uh, we need to obviously look into the role that uh, public works has been playing and it continues to play because as things stand is not efficient it's not effective it has actually placed a lot of uh, members uh, at risk uh, with with uh, with regards to the conditions within which they're working. So uh, there definitely needs to be a consideration about what other measures can be looked into. But to suggest that uh, every department must then uh, take responsibility for its buildings, uh, I do not think that uh, we've got uh, well, the SCPS would have that capacity at the moment because there are many other challenges that still need to be dealt with. All right, uh, Virgil, let's just wrap it up. I mean, in terms of the, the lease management itself, I know we were talking about the buildings and the upgrade, but it seems the lease management itself needs some kind of alternative methods in how it should be approached. What are your suggestions there? Yeah, I totally agree with you, Otavo. Uh, you know, you need experts even to manage the lease agreements uh, and all those type of administrative functions together with the lease agreements. You cannot just enter into a lease agreement uh, for the sake of entering into a lease agreement. You need experts, you need expert advice, you need expert views, uh, and you need, uh, you know, some kind of uh, uh, qualification in contract management uh, so that you understand the pros and the cons of those type of contracts. Uh, some of, uh, just to mention to you, uh, you're talking about the distribution of the, uh, or the redistribution of the responsibility or the mandate. Uh, some of the police stations do not even have generators when the electricity goes off, when there's load shedding. So if you're going to uh, uh, divide it into different departments, some, somehow or the other it will implicate, or the intention would be that you must bring other departments on board, like, for instance, uh, your mineral and energy department. It's going to be too bureaucratic if you do that. Uh, you have to go out with a lot of procurement, uh, you know, uh, pro processes, uh, red tape, bureaucracies, appeals processes, and so on. It cannot be. You must centralize the construction of buildings. You must centralize the delivery of those type of services under one roof. Uh, but we lay emphasis on the fact that you must bring in uh, experts, qualified people, uh, so that they can uh, really live up to the requirements uh, of what the Constitution and all other relevant legislations legislation requires of such a department. And therefore, the call is for uh, qualified people to come to the table. And if there needs to be partnerships with some external uh, organizations or entities, then we must also look at that. And maybe that's a method to be discussed by the Portfolio Committee going forward into the 7th Parliament. Uh, but it seems that since there's a new Director General in the Department of Public Works, I think we must be fair and give him an opportunity and a chance. He, is, uh, is, is, he has signaled uh, a lot of things in the last meeting that he is getting right, uh, and therefore I think it's just fair <coughs> to give him ample opportunity to prove unto the country that he can do the job and that he can execute the duties and the responsibilities as required. By him, yes. Gentlemen, I appreciate your time. Let's leave it there for tonight. Uh, that is uh, Virgil Garrick, EFF uh, Committee Member of Parliament in the Portfolio Committee of Police, as well as Pope Cruz spokesperson Richard Mamabulu.